Today I'm off to do a really, really special video. Today's farmer is really, really impressive. This is a, a young guy. He does all his animals, all his rotational grazing daily moves before he goes to work in the morning. And we're gonna join him for morning chores. And he's also buying pigs from me, which means I have to not only load up all my camera gear, but also some piglets. <laughs> all right, we're off to go to Mac Farms. Western Pennsylvania. I'm really excited for this field trip. Let's go. All right, hey, come here. This is my pal Quigley. He is a blue healer. He is a cattle dog by nature. I'm not a great dog trainer, so I can't take credit for anything that he does. It's just kind of in his instincts. Hey, where's your stick, pal? Where's the stick? Oh, go get the stick. My name's Eli Mack. I'm here on Mack Farms in Brush Valley, Pennsylvania. Currently operating on a 20 acre farm with expansion coming down the road. We raise Highland cattle, uh, Katahdin hair sheep. We raise meat chickens, broilers egg layers, we've got Thanksgiving turkeys, just got into honeybees, so we have a lot going on here. Since I was 12, I had cattle. That's when I got my first pairs when I was 12. I saved up all my mowing money from the summer. And he's like, what are you gonna buy with your money? I'm like, I think I'm gonna buy some cows, Dad. So I've been in it or dabbling with it for a long, long time. It's always been a part of, of my passion and what I really enjoy. So I don't think it's a surprise that I'm out here <laughs> doing this every single day now, but yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of a 12 year old who was saving up his mowing money for a cow. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I was into it, man. I was like, yeah, gonna get some cows. We got this, got this land, we're gonna use it. So we're getting ready to move the cattle for the morning and they are ready and waiting, eager, patient at the moment. Usually they're moving at us by now, but uh, so we, we move, I would say daily. There are gonna be times or paddocks that we might stay a little bit longer and that's all circumstantial. You know, it's not a cookie cutter thing day by day. Every paddock, every pasture, every day with the weather patterns has its own thing going on. So you really have to just play it to the hand that you're dealt for the day. I come out here, I, I try to do as much prep as I can in the evening, get all the big lines and posts set where I want them to, and then the morning is more about the actual move and getting that paddock that they're in secured for the day. We'll move water troughs, fill water, and then I'll move my mineral sleds with them as well. And that pretty much wraps up the cattle move. They're very used to it at this point, so it's usually a pretty quick and easy process. If somebody doesn't tag along well, or if they're lagging behind, Quigley usually helps me with that. And he's, he's really good at uh, moving them up and moving them with the rest of the herds. Uh, Eli, we've wanted, we've been for a while talking about getting some Highland cattle. Mm -hmm. uh, we, Mostly because they're like, they look like big fuzzy teddy bears. <laughs> they do. If that's why Kay wants one. Um, I'm really interested because we've been doing the dairy thing for a long time. Mm -hmm. And everybody who watches the channel knows I'm not really the dairy guy. Sure. I don't love milking. I don't love uh, that daily process having to, you know, go and do the milking and, right. and then the cleaning of all the stuff. A lot of milking is just cleaning every day. <laughs> But I love, I, I, Kendra called me the other day, she called me a cowboy convert. <laughs> I was one who, when she wanted to get cows, I totally didn't want to get cows. Okay. I was scared of them, they're a big animal. Mm -hmm. um, I had never been on a farm with big animals before. You know, you get a chicken and you decide it's not for you, you put it on Craigslist and it's gone, right? So yeah. you can get in and out quick. Cows are like a much bigger deal, a much bigger animal, more dangerous just purely by size than mm -hmm. a chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Totally converted, because working with them, uh, now they're getting hungry, now they're getting hungry. Getting antsy. Yep. They're like, come on, we let you do your shoe, but now it's time to eat. I've been a convert to the cow, and now I'm starting to think long-term, I think I would like to do 
some beef because we have the dairy thing. Yeah. And as long as Kay wants to do that, we'll do that. And mm -hmm. the minute she's done with dairy, <laughs> I love our mini jerseys. I don't know. I have a hard time getting rid of all of them. But I'd be okay with not milking anymore. Sure. sure. I'd be okay going down the beef line. Uh, what do you like about the Scottish Highland? Yeah, the Scottish Highland is a pretty cool breed. Um, one thing that I think they're really suited for here in Pennsylvania, like when we get winter, we get oh, winter. Oh yeah, we get a real yeah. winter. Like last year we got that 14 inches overnight, just like boom, 14 yeah. inches of snow. Um, and we usually get a pretty consistent winter. And with their double coat, they're not gonna increase their feed intake no energy way. wise wow. until like negative 18. That's really? when that's when you'll start seeing the feed intake increase. Um, it is a little bit of a trade-off like even right now this yeah. this part of the year this time of the year um, they're sweating I've been trying to plant more trees in the middle of my pastures cool I want to get some shade coming up I want to get some fodder trees yeah. coming up I leave the honeysuckle intact so yep. that they can get in and out of the out of the Sun they are not picky on forage they'll take the tops off of pretty much anything they'll browse leaves. Sometimes when I put them in a paddock, the first thing they go to is the leaves. <laughs> um, their, their temperament is like super smooth. Yeah. Like just really easy to work around. That's a big one, especially again, for me coming from not growing up on a farm, mm -hmm. not being for the longest time comfortable around large livestock. Yeah. You see those giant horns and as a, as a noob to the cow world, it's immediately like, oh, those look dangerous. Yeah, yeah, right. It, it can be intimidating, um, and I think even me going from Pold Herefords to uh, yeah. Highlands, I was kind of like, oh, am I getting into something I'm not ready for? Yeah. But it has not been an issue whatsoever. And it's actually really cool to watch animals who still have their horns intact yeah. interact with their surroundings, with the brush, with yeah, the trees. Yeah, use them. And you can just see those instincts come out that you don't see with animals that are pulled or have never yeah. never had horns, you yeah. know? So it's really cool to watch them in their element Yeah. because they'll like wrap branches down so that they can eat the leaves <laughs> off it and stuff. And they're very, very capable animals. Well, speaking of eating, they, they sound like they've been very polite, they've waited, but now they're ready to eat. So I'm dying to see how you do this move. Okay. Eli still has to get to work today. <laughs> he does all this before he goes to his full-time job. So I want to see how you do this before okay. before work. Let's, Let's I won't hold it. you up anymore. Let's You're see good. this cow move. wondering what specific equipment Eli uses to do these daily moves very quickly before he has to go to work all day, there's an extended version of this video. It's a one hour in-depth look into Eli's morning chores. He also gives a lot of advice on how to balance running a farm with a full-time job. The extended version is in the Pioneer Library. If you become a Pioneer, you'll gain access to that video instantly, as well as all the extended versions of our field trips to different farms like Eli's. Click the link that just popped up to become a Pioneer, gain access to this video and all our other bonus videos. Uh, as far as fencing goes, you obviously have to get all your fence moves done before work each day. Mm -hmm. Two key pieces of the puzzle I noticed this morning. Uh, first off, you have a semi-permanent uh, perimeter mm -hmm. set up with, looks like T-posts and some kind of wire Yeah, uh, that you're working off of. Tell me a little bit about how you guys set that up. Sure, um, th this I set up a while back. I'm not sure I would even have to use T-posts at this point yeah. in the game. If I had to redo this, I'd probably go a really? little, bit, little bit cheaper, a little bit lighter. That's nice. They don't, they don't question stuff never much, so. never test it not the cattle it's really nice to have a, a permanent fence set up that's always there that way you're just hooking into power um, with your reels or whatever you're doing yeah so it's it's right there it's on demand you just hook in and you're hot you know so and if you do ever have anything that gets out you've got that perimeter fence to the back you way. up and that goes clear back to the barn it does so you got good hot wire from mm -hmm. here all the way back to the barn yeah that you're working off of wherever you go. Yep. And your paddocks are built off of that. Now, is this a perimeter all the way around in wire on both sides? So 
the when I first started grazing and doing stuff, it was all the first half of the farm. This upper half doesn't actually have any perimeter fence around it, and even up on the other side of the pond. So I just put up two reels around no that perimeter, and that does the trick. So that's great, and that's part of the benefit of it, keeping them moving. Uh, kind of like we talked about with the chickens. Yeah. You, you keep them moving. There's something new. There's something interesting. They're not getting familiar with. Hey, this this dip in the fence is pretty low yeah. here. Like maybe tomorrow. Scoot I can that. get over to that bush, you know. You don't want to have too much intel. No, no, <laughs> got to keep them guessing, keep them on their toes. Basically, you're strip grazing, right? Would you consider it strip grazing? Yeah. You got you got your sides, your perimeter mm -hmm. already up, and you're just putting the strips like this in between. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you have set up after work? How much work, uh, when you get home from your day job, yeah. how much work is there waiting for you each day? Well. I don't, I don't want to scare you and I don't want to scare other people yeah. because I really, really enjoy it. Yeah. So like when I come home from work, I eat something and I'm out here until after dark. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that way, but I just, I'm in it, so I, I enjoy it, I do it. With holistic management, I have a, a planned grazing chart where I map out my year, typical weather patterns, any paddocks that I need to stay out of at a certain time of year for whatever reason, when I'm gonna calf, where I'm gonna calf, all that kind of stuff. So one is, is knowing where you're gonna be or where you wanna be and what your options are if you get crazy rain or if it gets super hot and they need some shade, you need to know your options there. But I like to have my semi-permanent divisions set up or what would be that strip like we're describing it. Um, I like to have that set up and done because that's a larger task. The divider fences to make the, the more dense paddocks are really easy to throw up. That's not an issue. If it gets done the night before, great. If not, I'll do it in the morning, two seconds before I move the cows. So yeah, it's just, it's, I would say it's mostly thought. If you have your mind wrapped around the next move or the next week of moves, it makes it so much easier. What, what slows you down is coming out here and being like, hmm, where, where are we going? Like how, where are we gonna pull the water from? You know, what's the best shade access here? You know, when you don't spend the time planning and thinking about it, that's what slows you down. If you have a plan, you can knock it out really, really quick. So it's just a matter of how much time have you thought and planned for what's coming up. Um, and if you do that, you'll be fine. It's, it's really easy to squeeze that in after work, before work, whatever. Um, but yeah, setting up the fences, knowing where your water's coming from, knowing where your shade's at, um, knowing what the weather's gonna do. Those are the big things, big things. Uh, if you're anything like me, you're always like way more cautious than you are a risk taker. So to, to dip your toes in the water can take a lot, and, and I know that. But the past two years, I've, I've just started like, hey, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna learn as we go, you know? I mean, try to take measures to not have your cow running through the neighbor's yard. You know, try to do those kind of things, but you're never gonna know everything. Um, and like we said, you're gonna get thrown curveballs that you aren't prepared for. So it, that's gonna happen, but the learning is in those things. You know, even as we experience things where we lose animals or we get a sickness that we've never seen before, like unexpected, you know, but it's, it's only a loss if you don't learn from it. So there is a fear and there is a caution of holding back and trying to be prepared and that's good and that's healthy and that's wise to a degree. Um, but then you'll, you'll reach a tipping point and you, you'll feel it, you know, we're like, to learn any more, to feel any more comfortable, I'm just gonna have to do it. So just try to get that uh, safety net of not ticking off the neighbors, you know, get that secured and then, and then try something, yeah. Regenerative agriculture is the step beyond sustainability saying we actually need to regenerate our soils. We need to put life back into our soils. We need our landscapes to be abundant. We need to let uh, nature kind of emerge and work with it, not coerce it or force it or work against it, but work in stride with nature to do that. That's a big thing with uh, holistic management is I can do enough to just get by with the land, but maybe damage it in a way that kids or grandkids can't keep doing what I'm doing. You know, so I need to manage in a way that gives them something that's gonna carry on for hundreds of years. You know, something that hasn't been damaged so much that it's, it's broken, it's a broken system. So I picture uh, kids and grandkids coming on board here down the road. I'm not 
not married, I don't have kids at this point or anything like that, but that's that's my family goal, that's my family context. Um, I grew up on the farm and it wasn't even this active, so I'm really, really excited to have a family aspect that shows them a little bit of everything as far as wildlife, nature, soil, plants, livestock, everything in between, and pass that on to them and let them come up with whatever enterprises they want to do with it at that point. So yeah, it's, it's definitely something I'd love to pass on to future generations. Come on, come on. Yeah, so you can find us, you can find more of Quigley, you can find more of the cattle on Mac Farms, at Mac Farms on Instagram. I usually do pretty much daily plugs with the, uh, the Instagram stories, just kind of what we're into for the day. Uh, daily cattle moves, every morning you'll probably find a cattle move there. Um, I also have a separate account, I call it Regensylvania. It's just kind of a spotlight on regenerative agriculture in Pennsylvania. So Mac Farms, we're doing beef, we're doing chicken, we're doing eggs anything that you might want we're going to be doing honey down the road so um yeah feel free to find us and, and look for those things you can also find me at kenco farm fence if you need uh if you need any fencing suggestions we have a great team of product specialists there and they'd be happy to help you with anything you need if you want to see the extended version of this video and all our extended versions of our field trips click on the link right here to become a homesteady pioneer during the month of August, we're having a sale. Don't miss out on that sale. Click here to become a pioneer now.